Hello. I am no, in no way a speaker, so just please bear with me, all right? I am the oldest of three children. My sister Amy was born two years after me, and she was born with what they call a chromosome disorder, and she was not to live to be a year old. She was too fed, and she didn't grow very much. My parents wanted two children, and they wanted me and my sibling to be close in age. So when I was four, my brother Tim was born. He was, when, when he was born, Amy and Tim were almost the same size. They were almost like twins. Amy started to do everything that Tim did, and eventually she took off crawling and walking. She even went to school. We were raised in a Christian household, and my mom made sure that we went to church every Sunday. We attended a Christian school. I became a Christian when I was five. My church didn't teach about baptism, so that didn't happen until later in life. My parents split up when I was about 10. My dad was an every other weekend dad, if that. He worked a lot and dated various women, but his main love was gambling. I was envious of the typical father-daughter relationships that a lot of my friends had with their dads. For Father's Day, I had to go get those funny cards instead of the sentimental ones because of our relationship. It wasn't deep, it was just very surface. My dad wasn't around much in my adult life, and eventually it was just Christmas that I got to see him. Although I never understood this relationship with my dad, I learned to accept that this was the way it was. Then in 2011, he called and he told me he left his wife and that he wanted to be in my life. I was a little leery at first, but willing to start up a relationship with him for as long as he wanted. I was pregnant with my son Josh at the time and I was hoping that my dad would stick around to be a pup up to my son, but also to my daughters who barely knew him. And he did, he stuck, he called, he got on Facebook and he messaged me. He texted, he came and visited, and we visited him. He even babysat on some occasions. July 2013, we went on a family camping trip for a week, which was absolutely amazing. Had my two aunts and their families, my brother and his family, my dad and his fiance, along with me and my family. At this time, I also prayed for my dad. I prayed that I would get to see his life turn around, that I would get to see him go to church, and live at a life that I never thought would be possible. There are some days that you can remember every detail, like your wedding day or the birth of your child. September 3rd, 2013 was one of those days for me. It was the day after Labor Day and it was a gorgeous, bright, sunny day. My girl's first day of school, my oldest going into a senior class in high school and my youngest going into middle school. My two boys were sleeping and I was cleaning the house, doing laundry and prepping meals and getting prepared to go into work that afternoon. Ryan, my husband, came in the door and I was really confused as to why he was home in the middle of the morning. He looked at me and he said, your dad was in an accident. And while that was registering, Ryan finished his sentence by saying, and he didn't make it. My world at that moment shifted. I found out later that my dad was on his way to work on his motorcycle just a few miles down from where he lived. A woman pulled out of her driveway right in front of him on the highway, and if you know anything about motorcycles, the safest thing to do is lay down your bike, which my dad did. But he rolled into traffic and he was hit multiple times and he died at the scene. I have lost grandparents and I have gone to multiple funerals, but this was different. This was tragic, the way he died, when he died. Didn't God care? Didn't God care how it affected me, or my brother, or my dad's fiance, or my dad's family? Didn't God want me to see my dad's life changed? Or see him happily married to his fiance? Or what about being a pup up to my kids, or my brother's kids? I was completely heartbroken and numb, the numbness saved me from the initial pain and I was numb for weeks. But it was just about that time that I resumed going back to work in my regular life that the numbness wore off. I remember coming to church for the first time after my dad's death and Pastor Brian found me in the lobby and he gave me a hug. I knew he knew how I felt because he had lost his parents in a car accident a few years before. He told me that I had to go through the valley, that I couldn't go over it, or around it, but I had to go through it. That was something that I didn't want to do and a place I didn't want to go. I thought I was doing fine, 
But then one Sunday in the middle of September, Pastor Adam spoke about how he got to see his grandfather become a Christian on his deathbed and how wonderful that was. I felt a rush of anger and hurt towards God and I walked out of that service. Tears were running down my face. I couldn't get out of church fast enough. Why? Why God? Why couldn't I see my dad living for you? Why God did you have to take him now just as he got back into my life? Why God did you let him die in such a horrific way? Why couldn't we have had just a few more days with him in the hospital? Or why couldn't we at least say goodbye? I felt crazy. If you ask my family and close friends, they will say that I am a little crazy. But this crazy, this was so real. I needed something more. I had a job that I needed to do and a family that I needed to take care of and be a part of, and I felt like I wasn't even there. At the end of September, Oak Ridge had a grief share care group starting up, and I signed up to go. I'm not going to lie, it was tough. Feeling your grief is one thing, but then letting others in to feel that grief with you is something else. Trusting people in your time of need, it's not easy to do. Getting down to the heart of cleaning out that wound so it can properly heal, it's not fun. Lots of tears, lots of confessing where I was with God. I journaled all my thoughts and feelings. I listened to praise music. I didn't just go to Grief Share, I participated in it. I spent more and more time with God, and the time and time again, he showed up. God brought people into my life that knew my dad when he was in his teens, and they said that they believed that he asked God into his life a long time ago. He had my small group just wrap their arms and hearts and intertwine their lives with mine. God provided peace when I needed it the most. He heard my cries, he took my anger, and he loved me through it. He provided me with a husband that never pushed me to be okay and to get over it. Through Grief Share, I learned so many valuable lessons like how not to rush the healing and not to stuff it, not to fake it till you make it, but how to push yourself to do that next thing. They talked about what the holidays would look like and how to get through that first year. They also talked about how the second year might be worse than the first. Grief is something I'm sure most of us have endured, and I am not someone special. I have seen friends lose husbands and others lose children, and I cannot imagine that pain and that heartache, but I can empathize with them. Losing any loved one sucks. They say that there are five stages to grief, denial, anger, bargaining, depression, and acceptance. If you have ever been hit by grief, you know that you can feel all those things and more at the same time. The emotions that roll through you can be overwhelming, and you can be okay for a bit and then bam, out of the blue you smell a smell, or you think a thought, or you hear a sound that reminds you of your loved one. Grief comes in waves. Some knock you down, others are a little calmer. But Pastor Brian was right, you have to go through that valley. I had a choice. I could have stuffed it, faked that everything was good and I was okay, or I could have numbed it with drinking, pain pills, buried myself in bed. But because I never walked down this path before, I decided to get help from others that had been through what I went through. Saturday, February 1st, 2014, just five months after my dad died, my mom went to pick up my sister from her group home. My mom went into my sister's room to wake her up from a nap, but my sister had died in her sleep. Amy was very special and loved by all. She had a way of making people remember her and making friends everywhere she went. I am sad that she is gone, but I am happy that she is no longer on dialysis or she isn't in a hospital room or suffering or in pain. Amy had 36 years here on earth when she wasn't even supposed to have one. That is an amazing life. She went to sleep and woke up in heaven. Yes, I miss her, but not nearly as much as my mother does. My mother suffered the most with the loss of my sister. I saw her struggling with her grief and I told my mom that she needed to go to Grief Share and luckily they have them all over the United States and there was one right where she lived. I know it's helped her process her grief and her feelings. Everyone's grief is different and everyone's journey is different. I went through Grief Share twice, once with the loss of my dad and one, once with the loss of Amy. Once I went through the second time, Solutions was putting it out there that they were looking for lay counselors. 
I didn't really know if I had anything to offer or if I could help anyone, but I took the classes. After the classes were over, I asked who I was interested in helping, and all I knew is that I walked down this path of grief and that maybe I could help someone else. So I helped lead a care group, and then another one. I believe so much in Christian counseling and solutions. They have helped numerous people with care groups like divorce care, forgiveness, grief share, boundaries. They also provide one-on-one -on -one counseling. The difference I have found between secular counseling and solutions or any other Christian counseling is that you take God with you on whatever journey you're on. God is your core, the rock on which you stand, the shoulder that you lean on, the one that you cry out to. Without God in counseling, it is pointless because you are bound to fail because you are relying on you and you alone. But with God, hang on. Whatever God has brought you through, it hasn't been just to get you to a safe place so you can go on your way. You need to turn around and light the path for others that are traveling down that same road. Through my grief, I have been taught so many valuable lessons. First, I learned that this life really is short. I have always heard that before, but I didn't get the message until September 2013. Second, I needed to wake up. I was just going about life, living it for me or whatever I wanted. I mean, yes, I was a Christian, but I wasn't on fire. I didn't give back. I, wasn't, I was just going about my business, just not really noticing anyone. Pain and heartache was my wake-up call to live intentional. Live each day like it means something because it really does. Third, I learned to love people and see people, to repair relationships, or at least try to, to forgive, to let the small stuff go, there have been probably more lessons that I have learned through this experience, but the last one I want to leave you with is that God can and he will get you through whatever you are going through. He won't leave you. And that he wants to use you for his glory and to show his power to others. All you have to do is let him. Thank you for letting me share.